All right, so today we're going to start with chapter five, which is all about our exponential and log functions. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is 5.1, which is composite functions. So um, two functions, f and g, um, the composite is donated with this little symbol here. It's read as f um, composed with g or f of g. A lot of times we say the word of, f of g. Um, it can be written like this with the little circle or it could be written like this, right? So essentially what that's saying is g is inside of f, g is inside of f, okay? So first couple questions here, it says f of g of one. So our first step here is that we have to plug one into g. So we're gonna do g of one, which would be four times one, which would give us four. Now that we know g of one is four, we're gonna plug that number into f. So we've got two times four squared minus three. Okay, this one says g of f of 1. So our first step is to plug 1 into f. And then plug that number into g. Okay, f of f is saying that we're plugging um, negative 2 into f. Which gives us 5, 8 minus 3, 5. Then we're going to take that answer and plug it into f again. So 2 times 25, 50 minus 3, 47. Okay, I'm going to leave D for you guys to try on your own. So number 2 here is the same type of thing, but now these values are already given. So instead of having to do the math to figure out what f of 2 is, the math is already done for us. That's essentially what's happening here. So our step is still the same. So our first step is that we have to do g of 1. Right, plug 1 into g. So we're going to go where x is 1, and then g is at 0. So g of 1 is 0. Now we're going to plug that in to f. So now we're going to do f of 0. So we're going to go to 0, and then to f, which would be negative 1. So same thing, it's just that we didn't have to do the work to get negative 1 like we did up here. It's just already done for us. So plug negative 1 into g. So negative 1, g is 0, plug that into f, 0, negative 1. Okay, so go ahead and um, do these four, check your answer on the answer key. Okay, so next page, same concept, now we're looking at a graph. So G is at the top, so G is our top graph here. F is the bottom graph here. So just like before, we're gonna work our way backwards. So we're gonna do F of negative one. So we're gonna go where X is negative one, and we're gonna go to the F function, which is this bottom function. So at negative one, F is positive one. Then we're gonna plug that number into G. So G of one, so now we're going to go to 1, but instead of going to f, we're going to go to g, which is all the way up here at 6. Plug negative 1 into g. So negative 1, go up to g, that's at 5. Plug that number into f. 5 f is at... Negative 5, so negative 5. 
Okay, so go ahead and try C and D on your own. Check the answer on the answer key. Number four, this says H of negative four, which means I'm replacing X with negative four. So all of the X's we're replacing with negative four. So three times 16 plus 16 plus three. Let's see, 3 times 16 is 48. Gives us 67. For number 5, if we want to do f of 3x, that means replacing all of the x's with a 3x. So 3 minus 8, instead of just x, it's 3x squared. So 3 minus 8, 3 squared is 9, x squared is x squared. So now we have 3 minus 8 times 9 is 72, x squared. So that's f of 3x. Okay, now on the next little section here, it's going the opposite way. So they're saying that we took f of g... Right, we plug G into F and this was the answer. So I want to know what is F and what is G so that when I plug this function into this function, this is my answer. So when I plug this into this, this is the answer. So there's lots of answers that we could have here. The easiest would be what's happening on the outside, what's happening on the inside. But these have lots of answers. Okay, so for example, what's happening on the inside is 2x minus 1. What's happening on the outside is the square root. So we could say g of x is 2x minus 1, f of x is the square root of x. So I'm taking 2x minus 1, plugging it in for x, I get this. Like I said, there's lots of answers that we could have here. This is just one of the possible answers. Okay, so for this one, same thing. Okay, well, if I make this the inside, then the outside is just 3 over x. If I plugged this in for x, I would get this. You guys try C on your own, and then check the answers. Okay, so next we're going into finding composite functions and its domain. So before we kind of get into these, I'm going to try to take a mini break and we're going to talk about just domain for a minute. So if you remember, when we're talking about domain, we're talking about the x values of a function. And a lot of times in math, when we're talking about the x values, we're talking about what x cannot be. So if we're looking here, if you remember from our last unit from outcome four, the first thing we would have done is factor. So we said we got the difference of two squares. And then we also have the difference of two squares on the bottom. We would say, well, what can x not be? Well, the bottom of a fraction cannot be zero. So x could not be positive three and x could not be negative three. Because if this was a three, we would divide by zero, which is not good. And if this was a negative three, then we would divide by zero, which would not be good. So x cannot be three or negative three. Okay, so that's if we have a fraction. The bottom can't be zero. Okay, I'm going to kind of skip a page here for a second, and we're going to look at some other examples of finding the domain. So this is on the next page of your packet. Okay, well, in part A here, we have x cubed plus 4x minus 1. Well, what does that look like? Well, in outcome 4, we learned that this is a cubic function, which means it starts down and ends up, and we have got two turning points. So is there anything that x cannot be? Well, not really. We don't have any asymptotes. We don't have any holes. It's just a polynomial. So there's nothing that x cannot be, which means our domain is all real numbers. Okay, in interval notation, we would say negative infinity to infinity, right? There's nothing that can't happen. Okay, just like in our last problem for b here, if we're talking about the bottom of the fraction, the bottom of a fraction cannot be zero. 
So if we factor, then x is not allowed to be 4 or negative 4. Now, when we're talking about square roots, do you guys agree that if we have a square root and it's a negative number, then that means it's imaginary, right? So we can't have negative numbers. So when we're dealing with square roots, the inside of the square root has to be greater than or equal to zero. It's allowed to be zero, so or equal to, but if it's less than zero, then it's negative, which gives us an imaginary number. So if it's inside, it has to be greater than zero. So I'm gonna take the inside, 2x minus three, and set it greater than or equal to zero. So 2x is greater than or equal to three because we'd add the three over, then divide by two. So in this case, x would have to be greater than or equal to three over two. So if x was one, because this is 1.5, then we would have an imaginary. If x was 15, that would be okay. If you remember, we'll have a function that looks like something like this, right? So it's all the numbers greater than three over two, if you remember back to algebra two. Okay, so this is just a reminder about domain. Polynomials have nothing wrong with them, so it'll be all reals. Fractions, the bottom can't be zero. Square roots, the inside has to be greater than or equal to zero. So now let's go back to these functions. So in these functions, we're finding the composite functions and its domain. Okay, now when finding the domain of composite functions, you cannot just look at the domain of the composite. You also have to consider the domain of the input function. Okay, so when we're finding these composite functions, we have to find the domain of them separately as well. So f of x is x squared. Well, that's just a polynomial, so it's going to have a domain of all real numbers. g of x is an x squared function, which is just a polynomial, so it's going to have a domain of all real function or all real numbers as well. So now it wants us to do f of g, which means we're plugging g into f. So if f is x squared, I'm plugging x in there. I'm plugging g into f. So now we have x, plus, x squared plus 9 squared, which means x squared plus 9 times x squared plus 9 which would be x to the fourth plus 9x squared plus 9x squared would be 18x squared, 9 times 9, 81. So this is our composite function. Now the domain of this this is another polynomial, which means all real numbers. Then we also have to look at g, which was all real numbers, so our domain is all real numbers. Okay, this one is going the opposite way. So f is plugging into g this time. So x squared plus 9 is the g, and we're plugging in x squared. So we get x to the fourth plus 9. The domain here is all real numbers because it's a polynomial. Then we also have to look at the function we plugged in. So we're always looking at the function we plugged in, which in this case is f. So if I look at f, it's also all real numbers. So all real numbers. Okay, but remember that won't always happen. So if we look here, the domain of f, of just f of x. Well, if we look at the bottom, x plus or minus 5 would mean that x cannot be positive 5. The domain of g, x is on the bottom, so x cannot be 0. Okay, so these are just the separate domains. So now let's plug g into f. So f is 4 over x, and x is now 1 over x, minus 5. So we're going to need to get some common denominators here. So I'm going to make f over 1, 5 over 1, sorry. Multiply by x on top and bottom. That gives us 4 over 1 minus 5x over x. When we're dividing fractions inside of fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal. So 4 is over 1, multiply by the flip. So x over 1 minus 5x, 
will give us a final answer of 4x over 1 minus 5x. Okay, now let's talk about the domain. So the domain here, if I set this equal to 0, x would not be allowed to equal. So if I set 1 minus 5x equal to 0, we would add the 5x over, divide by 5, we get 1 over 5. So x cannot equal 1 fifth. But remember, we also have to look at the one we plugged in. And the one we plugged in here is g, and g's domain is 0. So it cannot also equal 0. It cannot equal both of these. Not just this number, but also the one we plugged in. Okay, so g into f. So this time we're going to plug f into g, because this is g of f. So g is 1 over x, but x is 4 over x minus 5. Multiply by the reciprocal, we get x minus 5 over 4. Now the domain. Now the bottom here is just a 4, right? So if we're looking at the bottom, we had to set this x equal to 0, and we got x equals 0, right? But if I set 4 equal to 0, there's no x's there. So there's nothing that makes this zero, right? So it makes us wanna say all real numbers. However, remember that we also have to look at what f is, and f's domain was x cannot equal five. So that means this domain is that x cannot equal five as well. So even though this tells us all real numbers, we have to look at the composite, so we have to add that in. Okay, I would like you to try number four on your own and then look at the answer key for the answers. Okay, I wanna talk about these two problems here and then we are done. So the first problem here wants to know if f of x equals eight x squared plus nine and g of x equals two x plus a, find a so that f of g crosses at this point. Okay, so we're plugging g into f. So if I plug g into f, I have 8x, well x is now g, so 2x plus a squared plus 9. So this is f of g. Well, I want this function to cross the y-axis at 657. Well, if it crosses the y-axis, that means oh, it's a y-intercept which means x is zero. So I could essentially write this as an ordered pair, zero comma 657, which means the x is zero and the y is 657. So let's make x zero. And y is 657. Well, now we can use our algebra skills to solve for a. So two times zero is zero, so we've got a, eight a squared, so this is just gonna be a squared, plus nine equals 657. Subtract the nine over, divide by eight, square root. Remember when you square root, you can't forget plus or minus. Okay, then we've got this word problem here. So it says the number N of cars produced at a factory in one day after T hours of operation is this. So this is the number of cars by the number of hours. Okay, then we have the cost in producing those number of cars gives us this. So if we produce seven cars, then this is how much it costs to produce that. We wanna find the cost function as a function of time. So instead of C of N, I want it to be C of T. So I want the cost to be in terms of time instead of in terms of number of cars. Okay, well, if I know number of cars is this, then I can replace N with this function. So C is 15,000 plus 3,000 times N, and I know N is 700T minus 10T squared. So this is now cost in terms of time.